Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. This time powered by Hobbling Japan's latest sale. All of their in-stock items started out on sale, but only a certain amount of each item is on sale. So if you haven't checked them out yet, you can head over there with the link down below, and you will also be supporting the channel by simply buying stuff. But without any further ado, let's get into the news because this is by far the longest script that I've had for any Gundam news episode so far. First up, on Wednesday it was announced that three new Gundam anime will be announced in 2022. But now don't get too hyped just yet because for two of them we don't really know anything except for the title. The one that we know the most about, relatively speaking, is the one that's going to be alongside Iron-Blooded Orphans Urzu Hunt, or Order Hunt. The mobile game that was announced way back and I'm pretty sure a lot of you thought was simply abandoned. Me included a while back until some people in the comments pointed out that it was still active on Twitter and then I also noticed that they were still actively plugging the game on Gundam.info. And well, now it is slated for a spring release and they even uploaded a new trailer for the game. Although, like I said before, not too much is uh, being revealed at the moment. The new animation looks top notch and the two seconds of graphics that we saw also looked fair enough for a mobile game. And now the reason that the animation probably looks top notch is that to go along with the game, the Iron-Blooded Orphans anime will get nine compilation specials that will feature extra animated content from the game. Or another way of looking at it, they develop new animation for that anime and then they're kind of using it in the game. But the anime I'm currently the most excited about is the brand new television anime that we're getting next year, Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury. But at the moment that is literally everything we know. The title, and the fact that it's going to be a television anime. Also, um, it is abbreviated as G-Witch. Now, when I first read the news, I wanted to try and speculate a little bit, but then I realized how pointless that would be because just purely going by the title, Victory Gundam would be some kind of glorious anime where the main characters were constantly winning and Gundam Seed would be a poor you get my point. Now, I've seen some people speculating that maybe the title means that we're going to get the first main series female Gundam lead, but again, don't get your hopes up too fast. I mean, it might just be that uh, the Witch from Mercury is the nickname for the main mobile suit, like the main Gundam, or maybe even the nickname for the main ship that they're based on. Because, you know, the Witch from Mercury would be a really cool name for like a mercenary or a pirate ship. But yeah, that's enough speculating for now. Um, the only thing that I'm fairly certain of is that it's going to be an alternate universe, simply because I feel that if it had been part of a previous Gundam series, they would have made that more obvious. And then the third new work that we're getting is Mobile Suit Gundam Kukuru's Doan's Island the movie. And I just realized that I've seen Kukuru's Doan a lot, but I've never actually said it out loud and it's just really weird to say out loud. But whatever, my first reaction was... The fuck? <laughs> and then my third was like, yeah, that's actually pretty cool because when you think about it, that episode of the anime, even though it is kind of in a very weird state where I believe like even Tomino himself said that the episode wasn't all that great with quite bad animation, uh, the message and the story was pretty interesting. So I can totally see them doing something very interesting with that movie. Now, other than the title and the fact that we know that it's a movie, we also know that the director is going to be Yoshikazu Yasuhiko, the character designer for the OG Gundam, and of course also the main man behind Gundam The Origin. So with this, I wonder if the movie is going to take place in the regular UC canon, or if it's going to be part of the Gundam The Origin canon. Even though there is an origin manga about Kukuru's Doan, uh, there is no origin in the title, which is something that all of the origin OVAs have had up to this point. And even the article talks about the anime episode and not the manga, so I feel that it might be part of the mainline UC, but 
let me know what you think. And just as with The Witch of Mercury, the movie does have an official website, all of which are listed in the description down below, but at the moment there's not too much to see. It is literally just a title and they'll be updating it as we get more information. And there is more craziness coming to us in 2022 because on the same date, they also announced that they will be constructing yet another life-size Gundam. It seems that they're on some kind of mission to get the entire planet, or at least all of Japan, filled with giant Gundams. This time around, it's going to be the new Gundam, and it'll be planted next to Fukuoka's Lala Port shopping mall. But it's not just going to be any old RX-93 new Gundam. Just like the moving RX-78 00, it's going to be ever so slightly different. This RX-93 FF has the RX-782's color scheme and rather than being equipped with normal fin funnels, it now has a single long range fin funnel. Other gimmicks are also planned, but those are currently not disclosed. And, well, the cynic inside of me simply cannot help but feel that this was simply done so that they could easily remold the real grade and the master grade version Katoki. But anyways, talking about the RX-78-00, that thing now completely runs on green energy provided by Hama Wing, and is part of a larger project to have all of Yokohama completely carbon-free, also known as Zero Carbon Yokohama. And then talking about Gundam and the environment, starting October, elementary schools will have the option of offering their pupils Gunpla classes known as Gunpla Academia. Not only will they be doing the obvious, building a cool RX-72 Gunpla, but they will also be learning about recycling. That is a pretty cool win-win initiative. But now on to the announcements that we can actually purchase. Last week Friday, Mega House unveiled the prototype for the Gundam Girls Generation Lala Soon, and it's almost exactly what I thought it was going to be. There's an Elmuth base with like new type energy coming up from it. And then the way Lala Soon's dress is fluttering around not just looks really nice, but it also gives that impression of being weightlessness. So, so far it's looking really good. But that is at the moment all we know about it. Alongside Lala then, they also showed off the first prototypes for the realistic model series 1144 scale G structure series featuring a space, ground, and base diorama. Now, I do find it interesting that they went with the old high-grade Zakus to show off their space diorama. But anyways, um, you can get these things in spring next year with a price still to be determined. And on the same day, we got another big unveiling. The finished pictures for the metal build Justice Gundam. We knew it was coming, but now we have all of the information on it. It's slated for a January release, and it is going for 28,600 yen, about $280. A mighty price tag, but we're also getting a mighty impressive figure for that price. And it comes with a really interesting Fatum backpack. When it's stored on the bag, they kind of tried to give it a cloak-like feeling um, with those giant wings on it. And then when you take it off the Justice, you even have to transform it a bit so that it can serve as a sub-flight unit. And then of course, you also get a dedicated action base for that, so you can easily pose them like that. And of course, we're also getting all of the other expected gimmicks like metal joints, deployable beam boomerangs, and beam sabers that can be combined. Now, fortunately for my wallet, I'm not 100% into the proportions of this thing. But talking about proportions, check out these crazy chonky proportions of the high resolution model 1100 scale Gundam Astray Red Frame Powered Red for 17,600 yen, like 150, 160 US. This thing can be yours in March and pre-orders are currently opened. I'll have a link down below if you want to get your own one and also support the channel. And man, they definitely put a lot of effort into those arms. 
there's quite some mechanisms when you move them and despite the bulk, you can still pull off some pretty nice dynamic poses with them. Definitely a kit worth getting for the Astray fans. And alongside of this monstrosity, they also announced that the entry grade Strike Gundam with Armor Schneiders will be releasing in December for 550 yen, 5 US, and that the entry grade Strike Gundam with the Beam Rifle and the Shield will be releasing in January for 770 yen, around 7 US. And there's yet more regular Gunpla releases for January that you can pre-order right now. For 2420 yen, there is the very unique looking Barbatauros, and for 2200 yen, the militaristic looking high grade Gundam 00 Command Quanta. In February and March, then, you can get the Master Grade Dom and Master Grade Rig Dom, respectively. And even though both of them are 5500 yen, the regular Dom comes with significantly more stuff, so if you really don't know which one to get, or you don't have a particular preference for the Beam Bazooka, you should definitely be going for the regular one. Now, they also basically confirmed that it is just a 1.5, and they show off some of the new joints on the shoulders, the hips and the ankles, but other than that, it seems like it's going to be mostly the old school Dom. Now, that is not necessarily a bad thing, because the Dom was a great model kit, well, an amazing model kit back in the day, and it still holds up quite well today. But it just feels a bit half-baked, like there's other mobile suits that haven't received a model kit, and other older master grades that are in really dire need of an upgrade. But instead, we're just getting this slightly more mobile version, of a mobile suit that is famous for being a hovering bazooka. But I guess with that being said, with the Gumpla shortage we're having nowadays, any kind of restock of an old kit is, I guess, a good thing. Then from P Bandai, you can get the extremely impressive looking Master Great Shin Musha Gundam Sengoku no Jin Kuroko no Oyoroi, or Black Cloak version, for a price tag to match. 10,450 yen, around 100 US, and pre-order started on the 15th with a January release. But for that price, you're not just getting an extremely cool looking Gundam with a bunch of equally cool looking weapons, but also a gorgeously illustrated backdrop for your Gundam to pose with. Now, let's just hope that those stickers that they're showing look equally as nice in real life as they do on the promotional images. Then over at the Gundam base, we're getting a clear colored real grade Zeong for 6,050 yen and a clear colored high grade Varguil for 2,750 yen. I have neither the energy nor the time to be wasting my breath on these. So from Fusion Works then, we'll be getting the Gundam Converge 10th anniversary collection featuring a lineup of the most popular past figures. For 550 yen, you can get the Barb's Loops Rex, the Gyan, the Zidda Unit 1, the Zidda Unit 1 slash 3, which you can also change into the spare unit, the Gundam Mark II Titans versions, with all three numbers included, and the Sazabi Revive version. Of course, each figure also comes with a piece of soda flavored chewing gum. And you can also get them in a box of 10 pieces for 6,050 yen, around 55 US. And then remember that Gundam X Nike thing that we talked about last week? Well, there is more. On September 24th, next week, they'll be releasing the high grade Unicorn Gundam Destroy Mode version Nike SB and the high grade Unicorn Gundam Unit 2 Banshee Destroy Mode version Nike SB. Both kits will be going for 2,420 yen, a bit over 20 US, and as far as I can tell, they're simply going to be the retail releases with a fancy new box and also an extra sheet of Nike-inspired stickers. And then finally, they also announced a Gundam calendar for 2022 that will be released on October the 3rd. Unfortunately, we are only getting 7 images for our 1,980 yen, around 20 US, one cover image, the Freedom, and then six regular ones with two months each. 
these being the Q-Blade, the God Gundam, the Zaku 2, the Dead Scythe Hell, the Victory 2, Assault Buster Gundam, and the Barbs. And then as for the week that we could actually get this week, the fourth lineup of the Exceed model Gundam heads has been spreading in arcades across Japan with the lineup consisting of the RX-78-1 prototype Gundam, the RX-78-2 rollout colors, the RX-78-2 movie poster colors, which I at first thought was the Titans colors, and then a secret rare one. One spin will set you back 500 yen. And then what was also available in arcades starting this week was the SD Gundam Red Lander from Bonpresto. And then we return to the Gundam base for the mechanical clear ball for 2750 yen. A ball with completely clear armor so you can admire that beautiful inner frame on the inside. And well, on those older master grades, there was definitely something to look at. And then finally, something that I don't usually mention, the newest weekly Gundam Mobile Suit Bible. But this week, the cover model wasn't the standard size gym custom, but the always bulky Zaku 3. So how could I not mention it? And the magazine will cost you 703 yen. And with that, it is finally time to have a look at this week's Gundam Apparel, which isn't a lot. From Cosmo, we're getting a black or white Archangel t-shirt for 3,190 yen, 30 US, a Zaft jersey for 7,040 yen, 65 US, a Zaft raincoat for 7,150 yen, also around 65 US, a fancy Zaft functional toad bag for 8,800 yen, around 80 US, a blue or black Strike Freedom t-shirt for 3,190 yen, 30 US, and a red or black Infinite Justice t-shirt for for also 3,190 yen. And I do like the touch that the Strike Freedom and the Infinite Justice t-shirts are available in black and then in their respective like theme color. Blue for Kira and red for Atherin. And well, that's already it for this week's Gundam apparel. So we're moving on to the Gundam Cafe where we also didn't get too much news. But the news that we did get was partially unfortunate. On September the 30th, the Haneda Airport Gundam Cafe will be closing down. And even though it was just a limited time Gundam Cafe, it is still sad to see it go. But fortunately, we have Graham Aker to cheer us up. Graham Aker's special white curry set was released alongside a video on how it was made. Except for the fact that it was region locked. I understand region locking in certain cases, but why or who would want to go through the trouble of region locking a video on how curry is made? Also, this makes me wonder if that secret video of Graham instructing you on how to make the curry is also going to be region locked. Just imagine that you went through the trouble of getting that set because you're a giant Graham Aker fan only to find out that the video you bought it for, partially, is region locked and you can't access it. If only there was something I could use to not just get around region locking, but also secure my browsing, hide my browsing history, and used imagery that was totally not inspired by an MMORPG that I spent way more time on than I'm willing to admit. Something like NordVPN, the fastest VPN out there thanks to their more than 5,200 servers in 60 countries. And if you use my link down below or the code KKRT, you'll get a two-year plan plus bonus gift with huge discount that you can use on six different devices. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. But yeah, talking about huge things, let's wrap up this Gundam news with some interesting polls from Gundam.info. Because man, is there a crazy one going on at the moment. And it would be even crazier if they actually listened to the results. So, with the upcoming release of the next Ichiban Takarakuji Lottery, where you could potentially win a mega-sized Gundam, like RX-78-2 Gundam, 
they wanted to know which, well, they want to know which other Gundam we would like to see as a mega size. If you've seen my video on the biggest Gundams, you might have an idea where this is going. Currently in last place with 74 votes is the Banshee. Somewhat surprising considering how many unicorn variants Bandai likes to push on us. I mean, I covered one in this video. Um, or maybe that is exactly why the people don't want yet another version of it. Uh, then we have the F-91, barely pulling ahead with 77 votes, a quite reasonable machine for a mega size, which is probably why it's so low. Next up is the Penelope with 89 votes, and if you think that that is already a big machine for a mega size, hold on to your hats. This is going exactly where you think it's going. Then we've got the Victory Gundam with 93 votes, and the massive Double Zeta Gundam with 107. I wonder how or even if they would replicate that transformation in a mega size because it's usually all about big pieces that are easily slapped together. And talking about delicate transformations, there is the Zeta Gundam with 158 votes, and then my personal favorite, the Gundam Mark II with 179 votes, falling just short of the podium. Although, I gotta be honest here, even though the Mark II is my favorite of this list. Well, not just of this list, but like of almost all of the Gundams. Um, I did have to give my vote to another machine, the reason for which you'll soon know. So in third place, we have an XE Gundam with 254 votes. In second place, we have the new Gundam with 373 votes. And then all the way in first place, with 462 votes with the Psycho Gundam. Like, I just had to vote for this monstrosity, even though I doubt that they'll actually go ahead with this. But I still would love it if they did it. I mean, a mega-sized Psycho Gundam would be a whopping 83 centimeters which should be just enough to edge out the Neo Zeon as biggest gunpla ever, period. And if not, then Bandai, please make the Mega Size Gundam Mark II. <laughs> and then finally, we have the results for which mobile suit we would like to see become part of the Exceed model head series. And the winner by 0.1% is the gym. I would be super happy if they at least made this a reality. And I also wonder how they would go about doing it. Like, would the first wave just be the regular gym head, then with um, a white dingo variant and a desert variant, and then have each subsequent wave be a different gym, like the gym commands and the gym type Cs? Or is it just going to be like different kinds of gym in every wave? Whatever the case might be, I would just be happy if they went ahead and actually did it. Because, as I've said in the past, even though they do these polls, they don't always necessarily listen to them. Like, I can't immediately remember which ones it was, but they have done these polls in the past where they just completely ignored them, they went with the second place or the third place, or they just didn't do anything with them. Then in second place, with 24.7% of the votes, is the Zeong. And they did raise an interesting issue with the Zeong's head. The antennas on the side are actually longer than the actual head. And if you know the, like, the figure series, the head is actually part of the capsule. So all of the items have to fit inside of the head, which could be a bit of a problem with those antennas. But I guess you could easily solve that by just having the antennas cut in half and then kind of obscuring that uh, seam line by just having it pretend to be a panel line. But regardless of what they're going to do with that, these two are followed by the Goof with 12.4% of the votes, the Gelgook with 9.3, the Gun Cannon with 7.4, the Ag Guy with 6.7, the Gyan with 5.0, the Zok with 4.5, the Gun Tank with 3.2, and then in last place, the poor Gawk with 2.0%. And I just want to end by saying that 
they mentioned the exact same thing that I was wondering with the Zoc. Where does the head begin? <laughs> And anyways, that has been all for this very long episode of Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam News.